Alright, so now let's, uh, we haven't done this yet, but let's, let's save some stuff to disk. So we need to do, to track back a little bit now and explain a little bit about some different contexts that Houdini uses. Right, so I'm gonna go away from the coral for now for a little bit to just just explain uh, different stuff for caching inside of Houdini. And maybe you can still do it inside of here. So uh, in Houdini, you have different uh, ways of pointing to to stuff on disk. So if I make a file node, it's a file. So a file node is used to load in. Uh, stuff. So you have you can point this to a location to load something in. You see by default it's generate it goes to dollar hip here. So let's type dollar hip. And a lot of stuff in Houdini you use dollar and then you type something after it and then that will evaluate to a location. So if I middle mouse now on this, you will see this will evaluate to this this location on my on my drive so and that's the that's the location where my hip file so my houdini file is saved so dollar hip points to the houdini file so there's another thing called dollar job and that's a basically your project directory so and i can set that anywhere um i highly suggest you look at my so after you finish watching this part, I highly suggest you, you check out this tutorial that I made. It's on my website, timbenhelsing.com. Uh, you can watch this for free. Uh, it's called VFX folder structure. And there I'm showing my VFX folder structure and some, 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 uh, some presets that I use to do some caching. So I'm not going to go into that too much in this video. Uh, I, will, I will touch upon it, but I recommend you watch this. I will put the, the link in the description. If you're watching this on differenthousing.com, it, uh, it, will, it will also be there uh, beneath this video. But make sure to watch this um, so you understand that. But anyway, so dollar job is like, if I say you can go to, so with, with dollar hip, we're pointing to the hip location. But with dollar job, we can give that location. So if I go to file, set project. So dollar job will basically be the location of your project. So let's say if I just do it to a random folder, like just my HDRI folder, just as an example. So I'm gonna go there. And uh, let's select this one, HDRI sky jumps. If I now type dollar job in my middle mouse, you can see it will point to that location. So this will mean that even if your hip file somewhere else if this if dollar job is for example pointed to a certain part on your server or on disk this will remain constant on on the um on the vfx folder structure tutorial that i did i highly recommend again that you watch um, i'm also going over how to make some custom uh things so like dollar project and stuff like that so you have more control over where do you want to put stuff but we, this is also useful if we want to cache stuff. So for now, I'm just I'm gonna put my dollar job to my dollar hip location. So that's gonna just be uh, over here. I'm just gonna be coral. So select the folder, and then if I put dollar job, you can see it's gonna evaluate to the same location as my dollar hip. All right. So this is gonna be used if we're gonna write out caches for our coral. Because when we're gonna render this later, we kind of want to have them cached to disk. Because first we don't want to keep generating everything at render time. Because sometimes you might do some uh, some stuff that might take a very long time to generate. Like you already might have noticed that VDBs can be quite heavy, and like sometimes uh, it just makes more sense to save it out once, and then it will be on disk. And then when you load it from disk, it will be a lot faster. And with this coral, what we're actually going to do is we're going to save a whole bunch of coral to disk, maybe even more than we're going to end up using. And then we're going to pick randomly from those disk files to scatter them across the ground later. So that's how that's going to work. But um, let's just 
show how a cache would work. So we have a whole bunch of things you can use in Houdini to cache. So let's first down just put down a file cache. So let's use a node and my interface looks different than yours does probably. So yours, um, I'm, yeah, I'm not gonna reset the factory, but yours doesn't have this top thing. So I'm just gonna pretend like, okay, so that uh, like this, so this is what I use to set some stuff. Again, I am explaining more in this video. But what this will do basically is, um, let's just remove this geometry file stuff that's, that's there because by default for you, it will probably be, yeah, I don't remember what I put it to exactly. Uh, but it will have something over there. So there's certain stuff we can we can use there. So this is gonna be the file path where we want to save something out. So let's save this out manually. Let's save out parkour. So where do we want to save it out? Well, again, you generally want to use stuff like dollar job, for example. So let, if we type, put it to dollar job right now, if you set your dollar job, this will be the location where where your hip file is saved. And then we want to say that we, okay, we want this to be in a certain, so maybe geo. So this will create, if it, the folder is not there, it doesn't matter, it will create it. For and let's make a folder called coral, to, or let's make it coral tutorial for now. Right, and then I'm going to type coral. And then maybe this will be our first, our first version of our coral. So let's do, and then do another underscore. And then um, we're gonna type a extension. So uh, like if you've done 3D for a longer time, you know like of, of, of extensions like .abc for a Lambic or .obj. Well, uh, Houdini has its own extension called BGO. And the BGO file format supports everything that Houdini does. And if you're gonna remain inside of Houdini, so if you're gonna keep working in Houdini, BGO is just the best to use. Also for just intermediate caches and stuff, just use BGOs. So there's two different ones. You have BGO, that's the normal one. And you have BGO.sc, which is the compressed one, which you almost always use. You, uh, so it just compresses it in the slider. Uh, it takes a little bit, well, it's a little bit slower to load if it's uh, well on the CPU, but if it's gonna be very heavy caches, then it's gonna make up for it for, well, not having to load the entire heavy file from disk. So it kind of depends also on the on how fast your storage is. So you have .bgo or .bgo.sc. So let's put this in between. You can also use export other formats. You can also use this to OPJ. You don't want to export Alembic with this. So you have Rob Alembic output for that. So that's a whole different thing. We're not going to do that for now. In this tutorial, we're always going to use bgo.sc. So that's how you export a uh, just a, a like a single file. So if we set this to save current frame, it's gonna save the current frame. So if we now press save to disk and we open up this file browser, you can see coral underscore one dot bgo dot sc and it's say seven hundred and sixty two kilobytes. So if we now go to like a file node, we can go over here and we can load it back in. So now this one is loaded from disk. So what you could also do is, for example, channel reference. So if I just copy parameter, base relative references. Now this one will always load this file. So even if I ch make this a version two, so now, now it errors because it's not saved out, but now I put save to disk. And then reload, you can see it's back because now it's going to be two versions. So let's say I want to export something animated. What I would do is I would put instead of just BGO and C, I put another extension. I would put underscore and I would put dollar F4. Or just dollar f. So what do, uh, this will do is, if I use dollar f, it means the frame, and four will mean that it will add a padding of, of four. So it will be first frame will be uh, zero 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 one, and then zero 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 two, zero 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 three. Let's just test this out. Let's play, put a transform. 
let's let's have it have this rotate. So this is rotating. And let's just save this out. Let's just first do it without padding. Let's save out a couple of frames. Let's do 50 frames. Save the disk. So you can also see the file cache also has a uh, disk. So by default, this will not. If I now put this to load from disk, you see it will error because we're after frame 50. But before, it's going to load this is from disk. If I go in here, select this, and go in here, you can see it's loading it from disk. And now this file sequence is looking as just one, two, three, four, five. Generally, it's better to just use padding because uh, if you don't use padding, in like some file, like over here it's fine, like with uh, 10, 20, whatever, but some file explorer uh, then put like 10, like after one, and so it will, it will just be, if you use padding, that won't happen. So if I just type dollar f4, and now save it. Let's go in here. So show sequences one entry. So there's this is the dollar f4 one. So you can see 0, 0, 0, 2, 0, 0, 0, 3. And it can just load it like you want. So with these presets that I again that I use over here, which I highly recommend you. So I'm going to be using these presets from now on if I cache stuff. So download this. Um, so the download for the presets are available for patrons so if you're if you support a patreon for this course you can also download this um, so then you have all of these presets so if i type file cache now and let's remove the transform you can see this has a whole bunch of uh presets already so folder name dollar f4 so it's just easier so and also so then i can like if i want to version up i just have Increase the slider so there's less. Well, it's it's less prone for uh, for erroring. So you can also have raw output ge geometry. So that's just you can put it like this, and then you can save it out like that. So it's just a separate node that doesn't have any e extra connections to it. But for this uh, wedging, we're gonna save it out in even way which I'm going to get into now.